This is Jeff Johnson, creator of Weathermaker. I'm going to demonstrate the new time of day functionality I've added with accurate sun positioning. Let's dive right in. Previous time of day I had a sun that moved in a perfectly circular 90 degree perpendicular angle. So as you looked up at high noon, the sun would be right up at the top of the sky, which was not very realistic. I've changed that now, so I have a more realistic sun path. Now you can see this auto time of day that will increment the time for you, or you can turn that off and change the sun manually. As you can see, the sun is no longer moving in that perfect arc above the sky, but rather more appropriate to some parameters that I will explain right now. In the Weathermaker Prefab Day-Night Cycle, we have a bunch of new properties. We have time of day. That's the seconds elapsed for the current day. We have year, month, and day. Year, month, and day are static and set by you. In addition, you also have to set the time zone offset in seconds. Finally, you need to set the latitude, longitude, and axis tilt. Now, all of these are defaulted to sensible values, but if you want to change them for your own effects, you can do that. For example, I could go to the North Pole, which I believe has a latitude of 90. Now as I move the sun in the North Pole, we're going to get kind of, you can see it up here on the scene view, the sun is going to pretty much hug the horizon because there's six months of summer where the sun stays pretty low to the horizon on the North Pole. And then of course that's fall, so if you go, say, to nighttime in the North Pole, exact same thing. You can go to the winter solstice in the North Pole and the sun is below the horizon not really coming up except for some tiny peaking. Um, and then of course summer in the North Pole the sun is staying above the horizon the whole time. I think I defaulted these to Salt Lake City which is where I'm from which is a latitude of about 40 and that gives you a somewhat realistic, or pretty accurate, uh, realistic movement of the sun in the sky. Another thing that I've added, you'll notice as the sun dips down, I've added a transition texture for dawn and dusk. So you have a day texture in the sky sphere, a dawn-dusk texture, and a night texture. So if you look at the sky sphere, you can see there's the day texture, a dawn-dusk texture, and a night texture and you've got the amount of degrees that dawn and night fade to. So watch as the sun comes back down, starts dipping below the horizon now. You'll see that the sky turns a little bit red for a nice sunset and then fades into the night. Now, I simply tinted my texture red for that transition, but if you have an artist, I'm sure they can do something that looks a lot nicer. All right, so that's summer. Uh, let's look at winter time in Salt Lake City. You can see summer has a sunrise of about 5.50-ish and a sunset that's pretty late at, mm, I don't know, about you know, 9.50 or so. So let's look at winter time in Salt Lake City and set this to 12.21. I believe the time offset for that is at least 6200. See if I'm even close to right. So sunrise is at about 7 now, and the sunset happens a lot sooner in the day. Stays nighttime for a lot longer. So you'll need to figure out what these values are for your lat long that you want, or you can just stick with Salt Lake City if you like that. Just remember to set the time zone offset to the right value. Okay, so auto time of day is now different in Weathermaker. Before, the sun's rotation was determining the time of day, but that is no longer the case. The time of day determines the sun's position. So this is a breaking change from previous Weathermakers, so be aware of that. I think it's a better change. I think it's more intuitive, but it is a breaking change. So let's change the speed to 100. So, maybe 500, so you can watch the sun 
follow its path in the sky. We could probably go faster than that. 2,000. There we go. So the sun's going to dip down. In fact, I'm going to want to go underneath my terrain here to watch it. There it goes. So now it's lighting up the back side of the terrain. That's pretty funny. So it's nighttime and the sun is underneath everything and now it's going to come back up. And that's the new day-night cycle. I think this is really cool. Um, probably the next step I'm going to work on is a procedural sky. And also I really need to work on a better uh, night sky. So watch the sun as it goes below. The night sky doesn't rotate properly. It's kind of static. So I'm going to be changing that. As you can see it fades to night. But I'm not very happy with this night sky because it should be rotating and not static. Now a player in your game may not notice that but I'm going to fix that. So procedural sky and a rotating night sky are kind of next on the horizon. Anyway, if you have any questions, please email support at digitalruby.com, and I would love to answer your questions. Thank you.